you know, like Scott said, what a great way to network, right? Um, it's a new, yes. it's 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 a new way for us to 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 meet quality individuals, right? So we all we've all heard the idea that your network determines your net worth, right? We've all heard that, and obviously, you know, when you meet somebody online, you still want to qualify who 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 you mean who you talk to. But there's just a incredible talent here. I mean, today we just met Tim from Australia, who's an expert when it comes to online marketing and podcasting. And then earlier you had uh, two CPAs and CMAs that were on here. So That's right. <laughs> if, if you have any questions about how to reduce your taxable income, how to save more money on taxes, there's two individuals there that, that can help you. And for the folks who just hopped on, I want to again welcome everyone to uh, My Podcast World. It's our first uh, blab on My Podcast World. You've got Scott Patton, who's my co-host here, who in my opinion is um, he's the Michael Jordan of uh, podcasting and on online marketing. So uh, Scott, you know, for some of the folks who just hopped on again, uh, what, if you could sum up maybe two or two benefits, what are the two major benefits that you think for you as a podcaster yourself? Like what are two things that have really made a difference for you and your business that you could share? Well, anytime that you can be perceived as an expert, as opposed to, a non-expert, it helps because that's very attractive and it's a lot easier when people feel like they know you, they feel like they know what you're about and they feel like they know what they can expect from you and they contact you wanting you to do whatever it is that you do. And that to me is a lot better than the old way, which was knock on mm. doors and try to, uh, you know, make the, you know, door to door selling, uh, which whether it's door to door selling or it's some other way of selling, it's just really, really, unpleasant when it's cold. So, um, you know, I've always tended to work from a referral basis and I think that's the best way to do it. Uh, the other part that's, I don't know, I think it's more confidence. Like we're very attracted to people that are very confident. So if we look like we're unsure, if we look like we're not, uh, not that confident, we don't know what we're talking about, that sort of thing. People, it's, it's, I don't want to use it's repellent, right? Like you, you go away from it. So when you do podcasts on an ongoing basis, what you're doing is practicing your mm -hmm. public speaking. And if you listen to your podcasts on an ongoing basis, then you get better. If you don't listen, uh, you don't get better. If you don't analyze and pay attention, you don't get better. And there's lots of times when I've listened to old podcasts and they go, wow, like, you know, you use these words a lot and pacing is mm -hmm. not good the monotonic and you know, all the rest of it. So if you, if you're passionate about it and you're doing it on an ongoing basis, you end up improving your speaking ability, which improves your confidence. You just the fact that you've done it, then you get feedback from your podcast, from your listeners and you know, they love what you're doing and everything else. And all of a sudden it's like, oh, I didn't think that was that good, but boy, like these four people did. So my opinion is always the least mm. important opinion. If people you know, are listening and they think it's great, even if I don't, because I'm, we tend to be way hypercritical of ourselves, right? So I think don't judge it yourself, get some people that you trust to tell you their opinions, and then also listen to your audience, and then get better and better and better. And that's what happens. So Canuck Runner has a couple comments that are, I think, kind of interesting. Um, I prefer podcasts as passion objects and niche interest to build community. Podcasts stimulate revenue yeah. advance and marketing agenda. I was reading that. A cold. Yes, and that's a, actually a great point. One of the big things and one of the big controversies over and over and over again in podcasting is, you know, how commercial should they yeah. be or could they be? And I always have said this. When you listen to radio on the way to and from work, and it's talk radio, and even if it's not, but talk radio in particular, because it applies more to us as podcasters. It's the top of the hour, we have the news, then we have the weather, then we have the sports, then we have the business, then we have a commercial, then we have the host come on, introduce his guest, then it's a quarter past the hour, we need to take another commercial break, and so on and so on and so on it goes. So it just becomes one big interruption after another. And what I love about podcasting is if I find somebody who's talking about something that I'm interested in, whether it's politics or new, you know, the latest news, or it's into something way more niche, like how to knit mm -hmm. uh, or yoga or something like that, then what I love is the fact that I get to listen for 20 minutes uninterrupted. 
And I remember when my children were young, we didn't let them watch much TV, but we had all the old Disney movies and they were in cassettes. And so we'd put them in and they would sit for an hour or longer watching Dumbo or The Jungle Book, or whatever. And I came home one day and my wife had let my oldest son watch TV and he was really agitated. And he's like, mommy, like, what are all these commercials doing on all the time? Really upset him, right? Because he was used to sitting and just getting engrossed, not engrossed and then knocked out of the experience to learn about Tide or something, right? So I think uh, I think the point that you make is absolutely, absolutely uh, impeccable. Yeah. And we've got Phoebe USA joining us. I hope. So while Phoebe's coming on, Scott, I absolutely love what you just said because you know building a community is so important and everyone everyone's got yeah on. everyone's got a different reason why they start a podcast and that's what i love about podcasting so when you start a podcast show here's it, it's your show so you can say whatever you want to mm -hmm. say on the show you can do whatever you want you're the producer and so if someone doesn't like your show just tell them don't come on it's, it's your show whether they love you or hate you it's yours and you can produce what you want uh, Tim Ferriss, I'll share the story while Phoebe's coming on. You know, Tim Ferriss, who wrote the four hour work week, we all know how successful he is. And I was just mm -hmm. listening to a podcast where someone just interviewed Tim Ferriss. And I didn't realize this. I don't know if you guys knew this or not, but Tim Ferriss was talking about, yeah, you see me as this super successful guy and everything I've been able to accomplish. But he said, you know, there was a time when I actually had. Um, I felt depressed. I almost committed suicide. I don't know if you heard that episode or not. Yeah. I no, but I had heard that. It was it made it on my Facebook, social yeah. Facebook feeds. It was like Tim Ferriss was depressed yeah. at one point. And so he mm -hmm. said, um, so recently he started a podcast, believe it or not. And here's the guy who wrote the four hour work week, teaching people how to work less so they're not stressed out. And he's saying that. He actually found himself stressed out for a while, and he's decided for a change he was going to start a podcast. And so he did. And I forgot exactly how it went, Scott, but I think he said something about uh, he was just going to do six episodes to see how he liked it. Mm -hmm. And there was a picture of him sitting at his kitchen table. Hey, Phoebe, how are you? Welcome. I'm good. How are you gentlemen today? Good. Welcome. Excellent. Well, you have an awesome wow. set. Thank you. Thank you for yeah, I just got all the components together because my goal is to start a uh a podcast on here. So I've been kind of uh gathering information of how to do it and I, I think I'm almost ready to launch. Nice. Well, you look you look the part. You look the part. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I really enjoy your, your all the content today that you're sharing with your audience. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, well, Gordon, I'll finish your story, and, I want and then to hear, we'll get hear into from Phoebe. So Tim Ferriss, there's a picture of him at his kitchen table. And he says, the neat thing is the majority of my content is actually done from this kitchen table. And so somebody asked him a question about, have you been monetizing your, your show? And he said, interestingly enough, he says, not really. He said, I've been, um, I've, been, I've been able to monetize so many different things that I do. This was something that I wanted to do for, for, just for, for my passion to be able to give back to my, mm -hmm. my community, you know, my followers, people who are following me. And interestingly enough, he said, um, if I put my time and effort into this right now, I could probably generate two to $4 million a year just from my podcast. So he's, out, he's, out, he's got about 60 cool. million downloads already uh, with, with this new, new podcast. That's the power of um, podcasting. And the one thing you taught me, Scott, is it, it's so new. I mean, we're still in its infancy, right? Apple is so huge, and there's the ability for us as a little guy to partner with iTunes for a podcast just to get content. There now you're teaching me. There's Google Play. Google Play has podcasts now. It's too, awesome. So it's awesome. Every smartphone has an app on it now by default that lets them access your podcast if you want them. Incredible, to, want Phoebe. To. Tell us a little bit um, who, who you are, what you do. Would you mind? Or, First of all, should we no, call you Phoebe? right? No, Phoebe USA. So. Ellis. That's the name of my. That's the name of my uh, my organization. Got my my friend is Ellis. Last name is San Jose. Uh, just oh. to tell you a little about myself, um, I'm a real estate investor and broker here in California. And in uh, 2007, I co-founded a group called FIBI, which stands for Four Investors by Investors. It's an, an investment it. 
uh, network of, uh, of uh, you know, investors all over the, uh, the California area. Actually, we grew from uh, one chapter to we have about 15 now and about 17,000 members. Wow. And my Good. goal is to kind of take that and how, how we do that is we, we have uh, chapter leaders in, in areas all over the country that, that hold meetings anywhere from 20 people to 200 people. Okay. Uh, uh, and what I want to do is I want to transition some of that audience over to the online space where I yes. can host a virtual show because I could just see the power and the reach that is available to me by doing it this way rather than hosting a meeting in a hotel uh, uh, event center. Hmm. Right. Yeah. Was just, we just had a real estate lawyer on. Did you, um, were you on a few seconds ago when, when we had a real estate I, lawyer on? I did. Yeah. yeah I was yeah. able to catch part of that. Yeah. Very, very good. Great, great caliber of guests you have. Really yeah. amazing. Thank you. Well, 17,000. That's a lot. That's a part of, that's part of Blab, right? Like just the, the people that are on Blab are just amazing. Right. People. It's amazing to me because I mean, what are the chances of, of us three being able to have a conversation without this technology? possible right exactly exactly and and i i am just kind of itching to get this thing going but i want to do it right i want to launch it in a way where once i bring the audience there i want it to stick as much as possible amazing so being very painstaking and okay how do i transition people over because you know twitter is i guess a, a big part of blab right you have to have a twitter account mm. yes so, so I'll, you know now i'm starting to send out uh emails to to the audience saying hey follow us on twitter or, you know get ready for a big announcement coming up and, and just wow. trying to, because when, when I do launch the show, I want to have enough guests in there or enough watchers so that hopefully it'll, it'll spread quickly because wow. if I have a few people, um, it's harder to keep up the energy. You, you know, I want to have, I want to have a very, uh, a very tight, like you, you're uh, your answer about having optimal, a 20 minute show. I'm thinking like 20 to 30 minutes maximum. Mm -hmm. Attention. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what you can do, so let me get this straight. What you want to do is you want to do a blab, have a bunch of people on the blab. So you've got the, the chat. You're going to do a 20 minute show. So a couple minutes before you start the blab and then you start recording and then you, 20 minutes, you, you finish up and you're done. So right. what I would recommend is before you start recording, but you're on live, you've got some people say, you know what? I have a, um, the show is going to be about 20 minutes. I'm going to be talking about this, that, and the other thing. At the end of 20 minutes, I'm going to open it up for Q&A. Okay. okay. So because it's kind of like Oprah had this after show thing. When the show was over, yeah, people really. would go somewhere and they'd all talk about the show. Mm, yes. So considering what you're on, you're talking about like 17,000 people, right? Right. And your, your group. So you've already got, you're going to have 100 to 200 to 300 of those people every time. Right. You may want to do more blabs depending. It, 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 I mean, you, what happens is you start and then you decide this is how I can improve. So I don't want to get into that part. I just want to get into this part. So you do the 20 minutes. That's the part that you're going to take out and you're going to make your main podcast. Right. Okay. But the after show could have huge things like people will. It's a call in show now. Right. right. People right. call in and they say, you know, you talked about this. Alice, I didn't really, you know, and, and I was thinking about my situation that, and then you, so all of a sudden you're telling them the answers to their problems mm -hmm. and everybody else is having these problems and everybody else is either saying, wow, this is really, you know, the people that aren't in are going to want to get in, which is the big point. Right. But then what you can do is you can take these questions and you can chop them up into separate videos for YouTube. Mm, and amazing. you can even do a second podcast because you can do unlimited podcasts, you know, right. You right. can do it's a amazing. second one. Wow. BB Q and a, and you just pop it in, right? So you could have a channel that is your YouTube channel. So basically, this 20 minutes on video. Then right. you can take the uh, 20 minutes on video, turn it into an audio. Then you can take the hour that you stayed on afterwards answering questions. And you can uh -huh. have that as one video that you put up on one of your channels. Right. And then you could break it into, let's say you could break it into 17 good questions. Uh -huh. And all of a sudden, you've got 17 uh, Q and A's that can go into your channel and then you can take extract the audio and you've got 17 videos or sorry, audios that go into maybe a secondary podcast that you just call your Q and A. Right. Okay. And you just say, here's the question. And just the title is just the question. Right? right. So that that becomes a list and you can say to your members, go here or go to iTunes here or go to this page. There's 
all these questions that are asked. And if you find one that you're wondering about, click on it and listen to the answer. That's that's a fabulous idea. So just have your my regular show, and you know, I, I was thinking the format was going to be like a brief interview and, and some some back and forth. Right. And then stop the show. Yeah. Then have the after show where it's a call in, and that becomes such a, a content rich uh, opportunity. And it's totally right? interacting, right? Like people will see you interact with other people and right. see that you're compassionate, intelligent, smart, know your topic, and mm -hmm. also the and the other people you're interacting with. Yeah, like it just becomes a real community builder. And you see, when you're like, let's say, for example, that we're doing, a, you and I are doing a blab right now. Okay? okay. The last thing we want is this guy interrupting us all the time. Right. Because you've got a very, you're going to, if I'm interviewing you, I have specific points that I want to cover. You know, I only got 20 minutes. So I'm going to be focused on doing that and it might go off on a little bit of tangents, depending on what you say, some interesting things. But basically, I just want us to do our thing together. Right. Yeah. Get so now you've got all these people. Points, right? What's that? Get through all your bullet points on your. That's right. You go through, you got, this is what I want to accomplish in the 20 minutes. Now, if, if we have people interrupting us all the time, we, we've yeah. got a hundred people watching. They could be trying to call in. You say, look, we're not going to take calls until make a note of any questions. We're going to have a Q and a afterwards. And then you finish up. So now you've got a very nice polished, like I can tell right away, it's going to be a polished show, mm -hmm. right? You're very professional. So, Thanks. You have the you have the professional interview and everything else. Then you could have, an, and I would say take probably an hour to an hour and a half and say don't book anything after that and tell your guests because mm. usually your guests are going to want they're there because they want exposure. Well, now you're going to be exposing them to all of Blab and all these people that you're bringing, and they have a chance to talk one on one and in great detail, in mm -hmm. in a relative detail, right? I mean, you don't want one person. Uh, monopolizing the questions so you're gonna say okay you know if you if you want to get into this more call you know call gordon get a hold of him and take it mm -hmm. offline we need to move on to the next person okay. but i think considering your topic considering the size of the group that you're bringing mm -hmm. that it would be amazing to have the q a afterwards right but you want to create your sh actual show and then afterwards say okay you know the board, board lines are open right. call in and let's it's you amazing. know Wow. questions if they put some questions there you can say yeah you know uh fix wow. you know dom you know join us now and tell us your question sort of thing right because you already have some questions there okay. that have been built up right wow just re thank you so much god that's really really uh creative and, and and right on point that's exactly the the uh the type of uh, uh expertise that really helps you know to kind of really jog the creativity so thank you uh, you're welcome. It's my pleasure. So you, you guys have weekly what do you, do you guys have weekly meet up with your members or what do you do now? Well, it's it really depends on the chapter leader because we have 15 different chapters that are okay. they're usually a monthly meeting uh, okay. on a, you know specific day of the month. And then what we do is uh, twice a year we have a all chapter event where all the chapters get together. We do kind of a so, more social event. Okay. And uh, we we have that once in the summer and once during the, uh, the holiday season. And it's just a way for all the, uh, all the chapter leaders to get introduced and to really kind of have mm. some uh, unifying event for all the different members. One of the reasons why we, we, we grew our uh, organization this way is because here in the Southern California, Los Angeles area, traffic is so bad. Yes. <laughs> get one part of the city to the other. I mean, it's a real lifestyle. Wow. House. I mean, you're just going to not want to go. So we yeah, said, why not create smaller groups? Smaller groups. groups. So is it just in California then? Your chapters are all in California? We have uh, a few out of state. We have one in uh, Arizona, one in uh, Chicago. And okay. we're, we're at a, a point where we really want to make sure we manage our growth because we start to kind of lose control over the yes. content that's being created. So when you, when you get together, um, Ellis, for your live event, yes. once or twice a year, what kind of numbers do you get for your... your a few hundred. A few hundred. A few hundred, yeah. Okay. Yeah, interesting. We just did a, uh, a real estate event here in Toronto. Uh -huh. um, so a good friend of mine was an ex-police officer, and uh, he took a year of absence from the police force and just wanted to go out and create um, create a lifestyle for himself in, in real estate. No experience in real estate. They said, um, you'll be back in a year. And he <laughs> bought 77 homes in his first year, made, made $980,000 and never looked back. Wow. Right. Yeah, so he's got a really nice um, 
story. private investment club that he started here with real estate. And he's looking at it right now, too. How can he, um, instead of just live events, right? Right. So live events, what can he do to really now start taking some of his um, uh, information online to better serve his members and, you know, really anybody anywhere? And yeah. uh, in fact, um, probably in a couple of weeks, he's going to be sitting down with Scott and talking about not just podcasting, but how to uh, put online courses together as well, right, to, to reach more people. Which reminds me, this is a great time for a commercial break, although there's no money involved. I do have two courses that I promised everybody that came on they would get that had to do with podcasting. So yes. if you're just starting out, there's the first one, which is my Udemy How to Podcast course. And then I just came out with a new course today for, with a friend of mine, Daniel Hall, about taking your podcast and turning it into a Kindle or print-on-demand book. And so I'm going to put that link in there as well. And the only cost to these books or these courses is a five star review, <laughs> uh, as long as you think it's worth it, right? But uh, hopefully you do. So that's uh, hey, we up up in the uh, chat box. I put it before, but then as you guys were talking, I thought, oh yeah, there's probably a few new people on here. I should I should share that. Amazing. And, and Alice, I have a big question for you. It's been yes. driving me crazy. I gotta ask, what mic are you using? It is Audio Technica. I think it's a 2100. And here's the, here's the key though is I, I run it through a mixer and a uh, a, a compressor gate. Okay. So what what that does it makes me have that very kind of uh, uh, rich uh, vocal. Yeah. Voice. I was gonna say low sexy voice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure if I should say that or not. Right. right. We hardly know each other. You're already this going is being recorded, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. But uh, I, I have been kind of eavesdropping on other shows that I like, and I, I asked them, I said, how come, you? Your, how, how come your broadcast sounds so good? I said, well, yes. I run it through this limiter gate, and it eliminates a lot of background noise. Like right now, my HVAC is going, and you probably can't hear it. Don't hear it at all. No. Wow. And when I was using a simple USB mic, you could hear everything, and it was annoying. I said, there's no way I'm going to go on air with that mm -hmm. mic, because you'd be able to hear the, the car driving by the busy street that's right in front of my office. Right. No, it's an amazing sound. Really nice. Thank you. Yeah, I was. I've been testing it for a while now, and and, and like I said, I'm about ready to launch because I feel very comfortable with the equipment that I have, and and um, and just kind of how to how to learn to use it. During, so it's not you know the last thing you want to do is have some technical issues during your broadcast. Where you're like, okay, hold on a second, let me figure this out. I have to tell you a funny story. I was doing a Google Hangout with one of my co-hosts and a non-techie and it's in the health field and this was if i don't know what the guy looked like or anything but my picture was take some backwoods vermont area why like you know dirt road woods and you know a stove like no electricity this is my image of this person it was our guest right and i was told like no technical it's going to be hard getting him on blah 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 so we, and in fact, it turns out that we couldn't do it at his place. He had to go to his son's place and his son was helping him. So mm. we're in this process. I'm on, I'm in Vancouver. My co-host is in Vernon. So 300 miles away and 45 minutes later, we haven't got him so that we're all on. Right. And my, my co-host's wife works right beside him in their home office. She turns to me and she says, why didn't you plan like to meet earlier? So you guys could like figure all this stuff out. Right. And he turns to her and he says, that's what this is. <laughs> we weren't actually recording. We were just trying to get this guy on. Yeah. And then a few days later, it was fine because we, we figured out all the problems. But you would, mm -hmm. you know, it's just funny how it just seems like in the beginning, there are all these issues and things that come up. Mm -hmm. And after you do it three or four times, it's like, oh, that it's wow. not, doesn't come up. But it doesn't come up for me, but it could come up for my guests, right? And Yeah. Wow. Technology Amazing. seems to be so easy, yet I tried to do a blab with somebody and he couldn't get on. And, yeah. uh, I've had all kinds of problems. I've, I've tried to run other podcasts using uh, different types of technology. And, uh, you know, one of them we ran through Skype. And then there would be the, the, the biggest issue, and I, I will still have this with Blab, is I can't control that much about what my guests' technology, what they're using their equipment. Yes. No, that's right. So if they have, yeah. like, you know, kind of, a bad mic, a bad internet connection, or a bad, you know, a bad environment. I mean, you're just, you know. Right. So let's talk to that because that's a great point. Okay. And 
you, no matter what, are going to sound professional. Right. And I was thinking the same thing as I, I like to listen to my hockey team lose all the time. <laughs> so I'm listening to the sports announcers, uh, like a sports show. It wasn't a game. We were just uh -huh. talking about the game, right? And so they've got this expert coming on, and he's flying into Florida or something, and he's getting off, and he's talking to them on the cell. And it sounds awful. Like, absolutely. Like, are you kidding me? Like, crackly, and he cuts out and hisses. And the guy says, well, you know, I can hang up and do this another time or I can tell you what I know. And they said, no, 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 we want to know the information. It's more important than the quality. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, I had the answer. It doesn't matter what your guest sounds like. Mm -hmm. As long as you sound professional, then it's like, you know what? I'm talking to Gordon. He's in Vancouver. He's running off to the airport. He's on cell. Sound quality is not great. But man, oh, man, you got to hear what he has to say. Yes. I didn't wait. And so, there, you know, and, and, and go for it. Or, but the beauty of it is we're not live. Like these guys were live, right? Yeah. So you may say, you know what, call me when you get home or something like that. And you can yeah. schedule. You know, it. Scott, but, that, that's so true. Because I actually just recently, yesterday, heard a podcast. And the person being interviewed was crystal clear. And the interviewer, you could barely hear mm -hmm. uh, the person who was actually hosting it. And, and you're right, right? I, I kind of, um, it tuned me out pretty much but when you got a host that's really able to control that show and it's interesting you, you just keep on listening even if um, you can't really completely hear what um you know the person's talking about and people tell me that all the time they have no clue what i'm saying but they i'm so excited they get excited too so <laughs> and that's one of the things that scott taught me about podcasting or speaking on stage anywhere right as long as you're passionate like pick something that you have passion about that you're going to talk about don't talk about something that you have no knowledge or, or, or passion because they're going to see right through it. So that's the key to podcasting is, you know, what's your hobby? You know, what are things that, what do you enjoy? Uh, you know, real estate, you were talking about real, I love real estate. I've been in real estate all my life. I could talk about real estate all day long. Right. I have the same affliction. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, have you, have you got, in terms of a host, have you, uh, you were talking about starting your show at some point, do you have a, uh, platform you're going to be hosting your shows uh, on? I, I've been looking at Libsyn. Okay. Uh, yeah, they're the biggest. They're the biggest. Okay. I mean, I I, I really don't have a preference at this point. Um, you know, one thing that I think I addressed earlier in the broadcast was one of my concerns is if, you know, when trolls come, because this is an open broadcast. Yes, can absolutely. In the live chat, and, the, and, and I've seen other people's shows get really disrupted by some trolls that make some really derogatory comments. Yes. And, uh, you know, I'm just thinking, well, should I have somebody that I just have hired to go sit as a host and just kick these people out so that they don't distract from the, uh, the program? Or can you, you do that post-production? Okay. Think... So post-production, none of the chats show up. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. So that's not an issue. I was actually thinking that in your case, you probably should get one of your uh, or more than one, a couple of your, so they don't have to do it every time. Yeah. Uh, chapter leaders to say you know i'd like you to be on uh, as a co-host right i'm not sure how it would work yeah. so that you can manage the chat because there's nothing worse than two people talking and this chat thing going on and distracting you yeah, right? yeah. you know in fact what i would suggest is and this is why you need to tell a lot of the people in the beginning and mm -hmm. then have somebody that's in the chat that watches the chat for you because I would just take the window and move it over so that the chat doesn't show. Yeah. You know, right? right? Like we're going to ignore you for 20 minutes. Yeah. Get used to it, right? Because I need to do this interview. Because yes, it's going to be on Blab, and yes, it's going to be on YouTube. But the audio of it's going to be on your podcast. So you you know nothing on the chat is relevant except we can't hear you. That yep. would be the only thing that you'd not want to miss, right? <laughs> so. You know, you have the actual professional show show and then you have the after show and you need to just separate that. And if you have it posted and you get the person that's working with you in the chat every so often, it's 20 minutes. So, you know, at five minutes and 15 minutes, just post. By the way, there's going to be an after show where you'll be able to ask all your questions and blah, blah, blah. So they know and you're good to go, I would think. Have any of you used the uh, the Blab uh or repurposing yet and you know what's i'm just kind of curious of what the quality is of 
of the audio? It's not the quality of the audio is good. Okay. Like I have no problem with the well. Now, good to me might be terrible to you, right? But it's but I think it's fine. Good and I don't notice any me talking really soft and you talking really loud going on in any of the ones that I've done. Mm -hmm. The when you get the video, it's four six four eighty by two twenty or two forty uh, or three. It's it's low, so mm -hmm. it's not HD, which means okay. it's not going to look great on. And it looks okay on YouTube, but right. Uh, well, I run it through um, ScreenFlow, and it becomes HD on that. But, um, you know, it's not the crisp, crisp. Like, you look really crisp to me now. Uh -huh. I don't think you look that crisp in in the in the copy that goes on YouTube. Okay. So did you say you do a screencast of the actual show so that it's captured in HD? Or no, is that no, no. I, I take the file that they send me. So once you're done, you get an email. It has an audio file and a video file. Okay. And it's an MP4. I download the MP4. I have Screen Flow. I'm on a Mac, so I use Screen Flow. You, you could Camtasia is the PC version, mm -hmm. and I put it in there because I want to have Gordon's name and your name um, under, you know, underneath you, sort of thing. So people, oh, that's who that is, right? And um, and then it comes out as 720, and you know, it looks okay, but it doesn't look great. Because I know there was a some software that comes with Skype where you, you can, you can uh, record your actual screen. And I don't know if that's yes. call yeah. recorder for Macs. Yeah. That's what and I have a Mac too. So I'm just wondering, is there a way to make sure I have good quality video as well? By doing the blab, because I, I you know, I, I, the last thing you want is to have somebody turned off by the, you know, the production quality of your video. You know, I was thinking along the same lines, and there's a guy named Gary Vanichuk who is like massive. Huh. He, he, I don't know if you know who he is. He oh, was sure. Gary V. Sure, Gary V. Yeah. Everyone knows. So yeah. he's doing this blab. So I go to watch, and he looks like Gordon. Uh huh. Like awful. Sorry, Gordon. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> darker you know, and darker here, right? It's, it's getting darker videos. and darker. You yeah. can't see him. Right? Yeah. You're more concerned in the light, but. I mean, he and his guest both looked like that. And I thought, you know what? If those guys look like that, why am I so worried about it, right? right. So, and so I think people understand that this is the environment. Okay. Now, if you, so if you were to say, here's my DVD of me talking and teaching yeah. this stuff to you, and you tried to give them this, they would, you, they yeah, hang you. The expectation you. is completely different. The expectation is different. But this is yeah. kind of, hey, we're live. It's, uh, it's, you know, David King Live or Larry King Live, whatever his name is. And, you know, sometimes stuff happens and we're all kind of used to it. So I wouldn't be too worried about that. Okay. Uh, Good point. Good point. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Skype rec recording with Call Recorder is awesome. The, the, oh, the, I was recording Google Hangouts and I just found that the, it wasn't as sharp for some reason the last few months as it used to be. Uh -huh. And then I do it on Google. When I do it on Skype, it gives you four tracks, two audio and two video. So then you have to edit them. So when I'm talking, I show up. When you're talking, you show up. Uh, you know, it's a little bit more work that way. But uh, the, the video was a nice HD video. Depends on your your camera and the other guy's camera, too, yeah. but, and your internet connections. But So, I mean, on my screen right now, Scott, you and um, Alice are both perfectly clear, right? I mean, very, very sharp. Uh, lighting so looks okay here because I have a lot of fluorescent lighting here that I'm not happy. You're a little bit, you're a little bit washed, washed out. A bit yeah. washed, yeah. So yeah. what you want to do, and I don't know if this is going to look very good or not, is get a light box. Yeah. Yeah. So one or two light box, depending on what you – like I have on this side, I have a, a big window. So I have natural light on this side. Right. And I have the light box on this side. Okay. Yeah. And so that's what I need to get, right, Scott, is a light box. I started yeah. out with beautiful sun. 80, 80 bucks. It's gone. You have to have it. Right. See, if you had the sun, the light on your window side and then you had a light box on the other side, yes. then you would be fine. Yeah. You would, it would light up your face enough. You have the light box up. I don't, I don't know if down. anybody wants to see my face, right? Oh, you're a handsome so, young man. <laughs> but, yeah, so that would be my recommendation, Alice, is to get a light box or two so that – because. Your environment looks okay. I mean, it looks professional, right? You got the pop filter and you got your mic and you're talking into it. It's great. 
Nice. You're looking like you haven't been in the sun for a couple of years. <laughs> yeah, I, I was worried about that because my, my fluorescent lighting is, is overhead and I hate fluorescent lighting. Yeah, yeah. I have a, a little. Uh, this is like a, a little. Oh, uh, I've heard of those. Have you heard of these? I, I'm going to try. I don't have it hooked up yet. Mm. But you, there's a lot of adjustments you can make on it. And, and I'm space is at a premium in my office as far as okay. hanging lighting and things like that yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna try that i mean the, i have really actually good natural light in my office i have my my sh my uh blinds closed right now but depending on when i do my show i don't have to rely on my natural light if no. I do yeah. show there's nothing show. worse than the sun moving and all of a sudden what was Everything good lighting is terrible up, right exactly yeah uh, how much did that thing cost you by the way I, uh this lighting thing i think it's like uh like a 60 or 80 dollar item i forget mm. what it's called but, um where uh, did you get it where did I get it? It was uh, some online. I think it's called Mass Drop or something like that, where they have all these like really cool uh, items. I, I I don't exactly remember what what the name of this thing is. Can but you, uh, if I put my email address in the chat, could oh, you I, send it? Like if you can, I'd be happy to. I, I know I know where to find it. I just don't have it in front. I would love to see that. Oh, I misspelled my. Uh, it's P A T O N, not P A A T O N. Yeah, one A. Okay, so one T. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Got we got a question I'm, here from uh, from Dom in a minute or two. Scott. What type of camera switching software do you like to use for video podcasting? That's a great question. I like, um, I think it's Wirecast. I don't do a lot of it, but uh, I use Wirecast the odd time and I really like it. I'm pretty sure that's the one. It's amazing, actually, that you can do the switching with software. Because I had a friend that was into video, and he had he was switching them with a machine. It's like, oh mm. my god, how does that work? But uh, yeah, Wirecast will do it. There's another one too. I forget the name. Mm. What I was going to tell you, Alice, is in the uh, podcast course that I gave you for free. The first uh -huh. one, I go through the actual technical steps for putting up a podcast on my podcast world, which is our, our site. Okay. And I also have a section for Lipson. Okay. So, cause, cause I just thought, how can I have, a re you know, it's one of the best podcast courses and I ignore Lipson. Mm -hmm. This doesn't work. Mm -hmm. But if you're, so if you're thinking of it, you can see the two of them, you can get an idea of how they, how they work and then decide what you want to use. Okay. Yeah. Scott, for the folks who just hopped on, would you mind popping those two URLs again, those two free courses sure. you have? That'd be awesome. Awesome. If you know, if you just join us, if you have any questions at all on podcasting, feel free to type it in the chat. We've got Scott Patton here, who um, who's been um, one of the foremost. What's where I'm looking for Scott? I was going to say expert, but four most Vancouver Canucks ex fans. Yeah. Well, I was going to ask um, Alice San Jose. Is that your last name? Is that San Jose, last, California? Last or? San Jose. No. It, yeah. Okay, I was going to thank you. Like, the San Jose Sharks, I was thinking, right? Your hockey team out there. <laughs> yeah, they're doing well. Yeah. Any um, any other questions, Alice? What do you have, Scott? No, that's about, I mean, give me. I'm really excited, Alice, about what you're doing. So I hope that you'll uh, oh, keep you. my email somewhere and let, let me know how it goes because that's uh, that's awesome. I definitely will, and I and I found the uh, the link for where to get this light. It's called a kick light. Kick light. Okay. Can, can you put it in the chat box for us? Yeah, I'm gonna do that right. Okay. Here. Good. That's amazing. Yeah, it's always two ways. Communication goes two ways. Nobody knows everything. That's what I found has just been so valuable being on here is just so much sharing of information. I mean, from all the equipment that I got, I mean, I, you know, I said, Hey, you know, what are you using? What do you like it? What don't you like? And, uh, just been very, I mean, it saved me so much time into, you know, the, the, the island era. Yeah. Like, hey, is this mic good? Is that mic good? You know, what about this? So. I love your Thank mic. You. And you're the second person in about two weeks to talk about that mic. Another friend of mine is, I'm pretty sure that's And it's not expensive. It's like to... a $60 mic, but putting it through the compressor, which I got through eBay, was like, you know, I think the uh, compressor was like 60 bucks, 70 bucks. Really? And then the that's board. incredible. Yeah. 
The mixer wow. board I paid for brand new, and it's like uh, it's like a two hundred dollar mixer. But I mean, you don't need it that much. In in uh, you know, like thir- I always think like 30, 40 years ago, what we're doing would have cost millions and millions of dollars. Yeah, I, I grew up playing you know instruments, and I remember looking at oh you know oh if we got a mixer board, and you're just adding up all the stuff you need. <laughs> wow. And so now, you're, yeah. you're saying for about what 120 bucks there? Your mic, your mixer, you're in business? Got- um, probably closer to like two something because I bought the mixer brand new. But I mean, having okay. a mic and the compressor, you don't, you don't need, I have a 12 channel mixer, which I, I, you know, you don't necessarily need, but I had <laughs> yes. it just in case I would have in studio guests where I could, I could have them all separately mic'd. But, yeah. Um, yes. Right. I don't know if I'm ever going to use it, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, Better to be prepared, yeah, right? Better to have it now than to have to say, well, I'm not going to need a second mixer. So Yeah. So what's really neat, Ellis, is you, I, I can tell from what Scott said earlier as well, you're somebody who, um, who's, you know, obviously want to make, make sure things are done right. Yeah. Uh, quality is very important to you and you're investing in, you know, the equipment to make sure you've got the best to be able to serve your your audience. Uh, one, one of the flip side that I want to mention is, you know, podcasting, what's kind of neat is, I'm not a very technical person, so my business partner, Randy Goodman, with our show, The Empowerment Radio Show, she, she looks after everything. Mm. And I am so, so much of a technical dummy. There are times when I actually literally just take my iPhone, believe it or not, yeah. and I'll just record a 10 or 15 minute uh, piece. And I take the file and I send it over to Randy and she'll put it together with the, the intro, the outro, add oh. it a bit, and boom, there's a podcast show, or there's times when, um, We'll use Skype or we'll use free conference call HD. Mm. And we'll have a guest call in, we'll call in, we'll do the interview, we'll let them know when we're ready to record. And boom, when we're done, there's an HD quality MP3 file, audio file already um, put together. So that's the neat thing about podcasting is even with even if somebody didn't have a lot of money to get started, it's not an excuse. Yeah. There is no excuse, right? There's you can bootstrap and one of my favorite um, uh, hosts on uh, Shark Tank, right, is Mark Cuban. Uh-huh. And despite the fact that the guy's a billionaire, he's always talking about bootstrap. Like, you don't necessarily have to have a lot of money bootstrapping, right? And at the same time, if you can invest in something that's quality, why wouldn't you, right? So the mic you have, I'm um, definitely going to look at that um, for, you know, getting that for, for myself. So Great. Thank you for sharing that. Oh, Scott, I'm going to have to run as well, um, but I want to – on my behalf, I'm going to let Scott wrap up. Um, I want to thank everyone who's uh, who's on our show today. It's our first one, My Podcast World, on uh, how do you podcast? How do you get your message to the world, right? Whether you're an author, uh, a speaker, a lawyer, you know, the real estate business you're in, just by having your own show, the credibility that it brings, right? The, uh, the people around you that all of a sudden start seeing you as, a, a, as an expert. You're more credible and they just want to do business with you. It just opens up so many uh, doors. Uh, it's unbelievable. I have somebody here in Toronto who was interviewed on, um, on one of our podcasts. We ended up having somebody call them and actually wanted to envy the, interview them on television, uh, which is amazing. Nice. But at the same time, you know, social media is really the new, um, the media, new media. We know that, right? So podcasting is just like Scott said, you know, it's, it's not whether it's just Facebook or YouTube or Twitter or uh, Google Hangout or Periscope, whatever. It's, it's another additional tool that you can use to really get your brand, your message out there. So if anybody's sitting here thinking about podcasting, I would highly, highly you know, recommend that you seriously take a look at it. And um, Scott, I think we're going to be back again next week at the same time. Are we going to? Yeah. Yeah. We're going to plan on doing this at uh, three o'clock Western Standard or Pacific Pacific Standard Time, six o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And I just want to add one thing to what you said, Gordon. And I think Ellis is a great example of this. If you've created an audience already, like you you said, Ellis, yours is about 17,000 strong. How do you continue to have that sort of one on one touch? And when you do the podcasting, what happens is you get right into the head. You're never any closer to those people than those earbuds are going to be. Um, and so you get into the, you know, you really get connected to all those people. They all feel like they know you. They all feel like 
they, your, your friends, you, the, the connections become a lot stronger. And that's one of the dangers of large groups is all of a sudden people are feeling alienated. They're not being looked after. Nobody cares. I think that every company that has over 100 employees should have the CEO should have a podcast. And every week he gets on and he tells them how much he appreciates them and what the company is doing and what some of the plans are or what's going on or customer stories or something, right? Because that's the it's it used to be the reason we had these hierarchies. You had a president and a vice president and a vice vice president and a manager and a general manager, and an assistant general manager, and a division manager and a district manager and a store manager and a department manager it was because that was the only way the communication could flow to get to the people that actually mattered, the people that were doing the work in the in the corporate world. But now that's not the case. Yes. And you know, if you're the leader of your company then you should be communicating to all members. And that doesn't mean you tell them how to bag groceries or how to strip the, t the tire off the wheel rim or whatever. But you should be giving them some motivation. You should be giving them some love, some, some feeling of connection, and some feeling of belonging and how what they're doing is important. And in that, I mean, I took a corporate example, but it's, you know, whether it's a nonprofit or a charity or a group, you know, a meetup group or any type yeah. of group, uh, you now have that opportunity to talk to everybody one-on-one, -on -one, yes. which we couldn't ever do before. And I think that's really the power of the, of the podcast. Awesome. Scott, thank you so much. I want to thank everyone and, you know, stay on. Uh, if you've got any more questions for Scott, I'm not sure. Scott, if you're going to, what time are you out there in Vancouver right now? Well, it's, it's uh, 5.15 my right. time. So I think I'm going to sign off okay. too. So, so thank you. So thank you. Hey, thank you guys. Really a pleasure meeting both of you. I hope to catch future shows. Awesome. Okay. See you later. Bye-bye. Thank you.